Thanks to Shaper 3D for sponsoring this video. Hello, hello, I am back. It's been a minute. I had to go take care of some personal stuff. You know how it is, adult life and all of that stuff. But I am back, hopefully for good, but life could always happen. All right, so in our last video, we went over what I think are the 10 most important tools that beginners should know to start creating solid bodies inside Shaper 3D. And today, I wanna go over how to remove materials from those 3D bodies so that we can start creating cutouts and making joineries. And as always, you can follow along using the free version of Shaper 3D because all of the tools we'll be using today will be available in that version. But if you do decide later on to upgrade to the pro version so that you can unlock all of the functions of this great program, you can use my code Beverage Creations 10 to get 10% off. Okay, so since it's been a hot minute, just as a refresher, in order for us to create 3D bodies, we need to start out with a close 2D sketch, like this rectangle that we have right here, which we know it's closed because it has this translucent blue fill inside of our sketch. So if we go ahead and click on this blue surface, it'll automatically bring up our extrude tool. And now if we grab this arrow and drag it upward, it'll extrude our sketch into a solid body like this. All right, now let's uh, go ahead and do the same thing to our circular sketch up here. Let's go ahead and click on our blue surface and we'll drag this arrow downward this time. And you'll notice that this time, the moment this extrusion interferes with our first extrusion, the extrusion disappears and it will begin removing material from our first extrusion. We also get this new little icon right here. So if we click on this, it lets us pick from these four different operations. By default, you can see that the operation is subtract, which is why our new extrusion is removing material or subtracting material from our previous body. But you know, maybe what I wanna do is join our new extrusion together with our previous body. In that case, I wanna pick the union function. And if we come over here to the items manager, you can see that we have one single body that contains both the new and old extrusion extrusions. Okay, so let's undo that real quick and let's bring that extrusion down again. Oops. And let's click on that button one more time. And this time let's select the new body function. And you can see over here in the items manager that the cylindrical body and our first extrusion are two separate bodies. And finally, the intersect operation will only keep the portion where the two parts intersect with each other. So basically, whenever Shaper 3D recognizes that we've got two bodies that are intersecting or interacting with each other, it gives us different options to modify one body using the other. Um, but for this video, we're just focusing on removing materials. So we're just gonna be focusing on the subtract function, which is a tool that we'll be using most when dealing with furniture design anyways. Um, so yeah, let's uh, say that we've created a panel for like a cabinet that we're building and we want to cut a dado in it that runs this way. So what we want to do is let's select this front surface right here and then let's click on the sketch tool which automatically take us normal to that surface. And then we're going to use the rectangle tool right here and we're going to sketch the profile of our dado and we're just going to place it randomly anywhere. And we're going to make that six millimeters tall by 20 millimeters wide. And let's click out of that. And we're gonna rotate out of that view so that we can pick our profile and use our extrude arrows to push our profile into the body to remove the material. Pretty simple, right? Um, okay, so now one thing to note about this is that we can only use sketches this way to modify bodies as long as we're sketching on a flat surface. Because as of right now, we cannot sketch on curved surfaces inside of Shaper 3D. So then you might be asking, how then do we cut joinery in parts that don't have flat surfaces like the cylindrical leg right here? Um, I think I forgot to mention this in the intro, but I will have this file for you guys to download from our website just so you guys can follow along without having to remake any of these models um, but anyways in the case of this cylindrical leg what we have to do is create a plane in the direction that we want to make our mortise so let's say that um, let's go to the front view and let's say that we want to cut this mortise in this side direction like this 
that means we need to create a pure side plane. So to do that, let's come under add and then select construction plane. And you can see that we've got several different ways to define our plane. And we're just gonna go with offset, which basically lets us define our plane based off of any existing plane or surfaces that are already in our design space. So we're just gonna pick the side plane that's at the origin right here, and then click next. And now we're just gonna drag this plane and it's better to go back to a front view. And we're gonna drag this plane until it is past our part. So just make sure that it's past our part, but not you know too far away. So somewhere here is fine. Doesn't have to be super precise. And click done. Okay, now let's uh, spin out of that view so that we can see our plane. And let's go ahead and select it and then click on the sketch icon so we can start sketching on it. So right now we need some kind of reference, right, to know where to place our mortise. Um, obviously we can come in here and just use the line tool and just try to, you know, match up to our leg and draw some lines like that. Which, you know, it's not too hard because our leg just happened to lay on our grid. But, you know, that's not always the case. So the better option, let's undo that real quick, is to exit out of this sketch real quick. And then we're going to come under the tools menu and we're gonna use the project tool down here, which basically lets us project a profile of any body onto any plane or surface. And then click on this gear and make sure that the sketch function is selected and then linked sketch is also selected. Um, so basically linked sketch means that anytime the 3D body changes, our projected sketch will change as well. Um, okay, so now select the body that we want to project and then select the surface that we want to project onto and click done. All right, so now we have our projection and let's click on surface and go back to our sketch. And now we've got our reference lines. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead and select our line tool and we're gonna draw a line from this top midpoint down to the bottom midpoint and click escape to drop that tool. And then we're gonna double click to select all of our sketch lines. And we're gonna come over here and select the make construction function to turn all our lines into reference lines. That way these lines won't affect the way that we're gonna make our extrusions later. Okay, so with our references all done, let's go ahead and pick our rectangle tool. Click on this little triangle down here. And then we are gonna use the center rectangle, which just lets us define a rectangle based on the center point. So let's zoom in here, and we're gonna drop the center point on our midline right here. And we're just gonna drag this like that and create our rectangle. Press the escape key to drop our tool, and then we're gonna set some dimensions. So let's make that 25 millimeters by 15 millimeters, something like that. Okay, now um, if we're modeling this to actually build, we obviously want to set this dimension as well. So let's go ahead and hold down the shift key and we're gonna pick the top line of our mortise and then the top edge of our leg. And we're gonna set that distance to 20 millimeters. Okay, now let's uh, spin out of that view and we're gonna pick our profile and you can see that right now it's extruding it into a rectangle, but as soon as these two bodies touch, it's turning into a cutting operation. Okay, now we're done with cutting our mortise. Um, so right now we don't know how deep we actually cut since we don't know the distance between the leg and the plane that we created. So what we can do is just measure this distance right here, um, which we know is 17 millimeters. So you know maybe if we want that to be 20, all we have to do is pick the surface down here and we can just push that three more millimeters this way, like that. And we can make any further changes by just manipulating the solid. So maybe if we want to add some roundovers to the edges, we can hold down the shift key and select the edges in here like that. And then 
Oops. Oops, <laughs> let me select those again. Hold down the shift key. And then just pull to create the round overs. So, like that. And there we go. So this is the process we'll use most often when we're making any types of cutouts that just requires cutting in a straight plane like dados, rabbits, and other similar types of cutouts. But the other really important tool that we need to know is the subtract tool, which you can find under this tools dropdown menu. So it's right here. And this is a tool that we want to use when we're doing more complex cutting, where we're not just cutting straight in and out. So let's say that we've got got this cylinder right here and there's a plane down in the middle of it and we've got this center axis running through it. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to sketch a rectangle just somewhere randomly like this and so I'm not even going to dimension it. Um, I just want to show you guys what this tool does. Um, so let's go under tools and we're going to use the revolve tool this time and we're going to pick this profile that we just sketched and then we're going to revolve that around this middle axis right here, which, you know, creates this, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a ring, basically. Um, now, if we drag this arrow down, it turns that ring into a spiral. Um, and now let's change this degree from 360 to something large, like 4000. And that turns it into this cool spiral staircase looking thing. And um, yeah, let's click done. So now we're gonna cut this spiral staircase thing into our cylinder. So let's uh, go under tools again and we're gonna select the subtract tool. So to use the subtract tool, um, what we need to do is first, we're gonna select the body that we want to cut into, which is our cylinder. And then we're gonna select the body that we're going to use to cut, which is the spiral. And we're gonna click done. And there we go. So like I said, I don't know what this is, but I just wanted to show you. The subtract tool is great for basically cutting any profile that isn't in a straight in and out plane. Um, so yeah, basically if you're making anything like this, the subtract tool is the one that you want to use. And what it's also great for is basically cutting the matching sides of a joinery. Um, so let's say we got these three parts designed to be 3D printed. We got two blocks and this screw, and we want these two blocks to be fastened together with this screw. Um, we're first going to use the align tool that we can find under the transform dropdown menu. And we're going to use that to align the top of the screw to the top surface of the top block right here. And that flipped it, so let's click on this button to flip it back and click done. Okay, now let's go ahead and come under tools and we're going to use the subtract function. And we're going to first pick our two blocks. So by default, the program will automatically set the second selection as the part that will do the cutting, which is indicated by the subtract sign. So to change that, just click on the subtract sign and turn it into a plus sign so that the program knows that this part will also need to be cut. And finally, let's click on the screw. Now before clicking done, come under the gear icon and uh, select the keep originals off and select remove bodies because we don't want to remove the screw once the operation is completed. Now let's uh, double click on the screw and if we pull the screw up, the screw is still there and if we look down here, you can see that the threads have been cut into both of our blocks. Like that. So from this example, you can probably start seeing why this is such a powerful tool for creating woodworking joinery, right? So basically, we just need to create one side of the joinery, use the subtract tool, and the program will create the matching side for us. So let's uh, do another example. Um, now let's say that we have these two boards that are sitting at 90 degrees to each other. And we want these two to join together with a half lap joint. And just to keep this tutorial short, um, I already drew out, I already sketched out the cutout for one of these. So it's right here. 
And let's select that profile and I'm just gonna push that in to cut that out. And now let's bring back that other board. And we're just gonna come under tools and we're gonna select the subtract function. And once again, we're gonna pick the second board here, the one without the cutout. And then we're gonna pick the one with the cutout as our cutting tool. And just like before, make sure that the keep originals of and select remove bodies and click done. And now if we double click on our second board and pull that down, you can see that our matching side is now complete. So super easy, right? That's all we had to do. We didn't need to do any measurements or any additional sketches and it made the cutout for us. So let's undo that and bring that back up. So yeah, we got the matching side of our joinery and just for fun, let's uh, bring a third body in here. So we now got this big old block like that. Let's put that back up there and go under tools and use the subtract function again. And this time, pick our new body as a part that we'll be removing material from. And then we'll use our previous two parts as our cutting tools. And once again, keep originals of the removed bodies and click done. And guys, look at that. We now have a castle joint. All right, let's uh, put that back just like that. So yeah, these are the most common ways to remove material from solid bodies in SideShaper 3D. And these are the most common tools that we'll be using as we move forward designing real world furniture pieces in SideShaper 3D. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will have these models for you guys to download from a website with my link in the descriptions. Um, and yeah, don't forget if you want to upgrade to the pro version of Shaper 3D, use my code Beverage Creations 10 at checkout to get 10% off and hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.